Hey guys, it's Ben. Happy, happy Thursday to you. I hope everything's going well this week and last. I uh, hope this video finds you doing well. And if you're on this uh, Monjaro or Ozempic or whatever GLP-1 thing you're doing right now, I hope it's going well for you. Uh, you know, I always say everybody's different and it doesn't go well for everybody. Some people have, uh, you know, some pretty serious side effects, uh, at least, you know, almost debilitating in some cases. Uh, but some people get away with having no side effects whatsoever. It's almost like the world isn't fair. Uh, and for those that don't know, it isn't. Uh, that might be the reason. Anyway, uh, my side effects on this stuff have been, I would say, light. I would say my side effects have been what you can probably expect getting used to a new medication. Not terrible, uh, but some of them were, were pretty bad. Uh, I didn't like the, the, um, the nausea one. I was getting that a couple of times a week when I first started this stuff, and now I'm not getting that hardly at all. Maybe once, once a month. Uh, and even then it passes quickly and it, you know, I don't even feel it. Anyway, so lately things have been going on with my Monjaro, in case people didn't know. I'm not on this for weight loss, not entirely. I got on this stuff for my diabetes. Uh, I started off with a blood glucose level of 473 and my A1C was 10.2, I believe it was. Uh, I've been on this stuff for about four months now and I got my A1C down to 5.2 and my blood glucose levels, although that they've been rising weekly, lately uh, i started at like 100 90 to 100 and it's been going up every week about five to ten points so last week my blood glucose was 126 and that's the highest average weekly average i've had since i've started this stuff how many weeks ago has it been 23 24 weeks ago so that was the highest that my blood glucose had been so i was a little concerned about it obviously so i contacted my doctor and I'm gonna tell you what she said about it in just a second uh, after I reveal this week's blood glucose level because I sent that email to her when I got that last week and I said, hey, I'm a little alarmed. Should I be going up in dose, right? I'm at 126, my average, right? Should I be going up in dose? Should I go from the five milligram dose up to the 7.5 uh, is what I asked her. They've got this thing called a patient portal where you can email directly your doctor and ask them questions, right? You're not gonna overdo it, right? You shouldn't overdo it and they warn you against that because if you do that, they're just gonna not answer. But I did ask her, I said, look, I'm at 126. Should I be up in my dose to 7.5 milligrams or what? Uh, and here's my trend over the last three weeks, it's been going up, up and up. And what did she say? <clears throat> I also asked if I could get the Dexcom uh, continuous glucose monitor uh, uh, you know, prescribed to me because it is super expensive. It's like almost $400. I went and priced it and I'm like, eh, maybe I can get my insurance to pay for it. This is something that it's a health benefit, right? If I knew how certain foods uh, affected my blood sugar on a real time basis, that would really be educational. That would really improve my health, which uh, in the long run would decrease my healthcare costs. If my health is improved, I'm going to the doctor less often right? And my health car, my healthcare costs will decrease. So I figured, of course, they'll do that. Uh, and she got back to me and she said, there's no way that you're going to get your, uh, that you're going to get this continuous glucose monitor because your last A1C was 5.4 and that indicates well controlled, right? It's not likely that your insurance is going to cover it. So not getting the Dexcom continuous glucose monitor immediately, I'm gonna start saving my shekels and my pennies and stuff like that and cans to recycle uh, until I can afford it. Because I really want it, I think it'll be very educational to me uh, as I go through all this stuff. I sent that to my doc because I was really worried about my, you know, increasing uh, blood glucose going up. Because initially she told me, Ben, your goal is to shoot for 90 to 100, and that's what I did. And I was between 90 and 100 for weeks, 20 weeks at least. And then suddenly I started going above 100, right? 115, 117, 126, continuously going up week after week. And I was like, man, 
you know, uh, I ask anybody else out there, is this when you go up? Is this when you take your next dose? And a lot of people said, yeah, this is when you ask your doctor to go up. If it stops, you know, if it's not working as well as it used to, this is when, uh, this is the time. This is the time to ask him for the next dose, right? But some people said, no, uh, try a different injection location first before you ask for the next dose because it may work for you. It worked for me, right? These are the comments that I'm getting. This is why I love the comments, y'all. And this is why I love you guys telling me how it's going for you. Because these little things that you just take for granted, right? Us other guys, we don't know that you've taken that for granted and we're not educated on that yet. So the different location, did it work for me? The answer is yes. My wife came and she injected me in the, the back of my left arm, right? This week, my, blue, my blood glucose uh, average is 111. Last week it was 126. This is the first week in four weeks that it's gone down and it's gone down significantly. It went down from an average last week of 126 all the way down to 111, right? So I would say that the back of my arm is working. In fact, I'm gonna have my wife come in and do the back of my other arm uh, here momentarily. But before we do that, uh, I got a weigh in to do. You guys know, last week my weight was 153.8. That's the lowest that I ever, uh, <laughs> that's the lowest weight I remember ever weighing in my life because I really didn't keep track of my weight prior to that because I weighed more than that when I was in high school and I weighed more than that a good portion of my time when I was in middle school and before that I don't remember much. It was a long time ago. You guys, I'm 59 years old for crying out loud. How much can I remember? Right. I'm lucky I can remember my own, you know, code to get into my house, uh, let alone something that long ago. But anyway, I almost forgot to tell you part of the conversation with my doc on this patient portal. We went back and forth a couple of times and I was asking her stuff. Uh, and one of the questions that I ask her is, OK, since my goal is no, no longer 90 to 100, when should I contact you about going up and dose? When should I become alarmed enough? to make an appointment with you or to contact you via this patient portal thing and say, hey, maybe I need to go up and dose. And she came back and she said, if you have a blood glucose reading uh, of 140 consistently uh, or above, you should definitely come in and we'll up your dose more than likely. So that's what we're looking for now. Uh, but my goal, you guys, is to remain at that 90 to 100. I'm still striving for it. I'm gonna do what I can do as far as eating goes right? While I'm getting my uh, healthy intake of food, I'm going to see what I can do about lowering my blood glucose uh, levels via food because this is something that I need to work on anyway and that I have been working on, but I need to work on it harder. So I'm going to do that, but I'm also trying the different injection sites. And like I said last week, the behind the arm site made all the difference for me. Uh, were there any differences in my symptoms? Uh, my side effects, not symptoms, side effects. Uh, I was nauseated one day uh, and I went to bed super early the next day. Uh, but not entirely sure that's because I got injected in the back of my arm. As you guys know, I've been having some foot problems. My diabetes wasn't caught in time and I've got some neuropathy nerve damage down there. I also have a case of osteoarthritis, which is very painful, by the way. Uh, so that's been keeping me up at night as well. So I'm not really sure if it was uh, a side effect of the drug. It's more likely the foot pain waking me up in the middle of the night. My doctor did up my dose on gabapentin. I'm up to 600 milligrams three times a day. So that's a lot. Uh, I don't really like taking that much gabapentin, but it is getting me to sleep uh, through the nights some nights. So that's a big improvement. Before I was waking up every night, now I'm only waking up like every other night or every third night. So improvement, but we still need to talk to the foot doctor about maybe a different change of medication. Anyway, I'm getting off subject again, you guys, I'm so sorry. God bless. You know, Bill Holder, 5271, while I'm talking about it, he said, I usually do mine in the thigh, but this week I decided to try a different site. So I did my stomach. I actually feel like it didn't work at all. I feel hungry and the food noise is loud this week. I also gained a pound. Uh, and Cl Closter said, uh, 
EBID, everybody is different. And that is the truest statement that there is when it comes to medicine, right? Uh, a lot of us are very similar, but not everybody. Uh, everybody in their own right is different. Even us that can tolerate the medication only tolerate it to a degree, right? Some of us tolerate it very well and other of us, you know, that's tough to get through that week tolerating it uh, for the sake of losing weight or getting your blood sugar down. It can be tough for some. Uh, but for me, it hasn't been terrible. Uh, thanks for the comment, Bill. And you're right. Uh, different sites do react, uh, do affect people in different ways. I've heard this many times. For me, the stomach worked great for 20 some weeks, then it's kind of stopped working. So I tried it in the back of my arm working. All right, let's get back to the weight thing. Sorry, I got off subject. I'm ADHD and I'm one of those people, OCD as well. If I don't get out what's on my mind, right? It's just gonna sit there and it's gonna distract me. So I get it out so I'm not distracted by it. And I apologize if you guys can't handle that. Uh, anyway, so last week's weight, 153.8. Like I was saying, it's an all-time low. I've never, I never remember weighing that few pounds. Uh, but that's a new record for me as far as my adult life goes. So 153.8 is a record. I'm hoping that I'm not 153.8 today. I'm hoping that I weigh a little bit more. How much more, you ask? I'd like to weigh 1.2 pounds more because 1.2 pounds would put me at 155 pounds and that's right in my sweet spot. My goal weight, uh, as you know, as some of you guys know, as some of you guys that are just joining us don't know, my goal weight uh, was 150 to 160 and I hit that. I'm below 160 and I just went down below 155 last week. I would like to get up to 155 because I do not want to trend downwards because I don't want to go less than 150 at all. So I'm keeping an eye on it and we're taking more calories in. My wife's making sure that I took more calories in this week. So there may be a weight gain and I'm hoping, like I said, 1.2 pounds. So let's go have a look at it. All right. Hoping for 1.2 pounds today. Let's see what we got. No whammies. We don't want to lose anymore. Ooh, that is a good weight. I'm so happy. 155.8 pounds, y'all. Almost perfect. I gained some weight, but that's fine. I wanted to do that. I'm only 0.8 pounds above the perfect weight. 155 for me. Uh, 0.8. So now I just need to consume slightly less calories. Maybe, you know, one less donut less. I'm just joking. I don't eat donuts. <laughs> I think they'd make me sick at this point. I don't believe I could consume uh, that much sugar in one sitting without getting sick. Uh, just the way I feel. Anyway. All right, like I said, uh, I'm gonna take my injection again in the back of my arm, but we're gonna do it in the back of my right arm this time uh, because we did it in the back of my left arm last time. I'm gonna have my beautiful assistant come in. Karen, you guys met her last week and a bunch of you guys had some really nice things to say about her and it made her really happy. And she's very smiley all day reading those comments about how you thought she was so cute and adorable and all that kind of good stuff. She really likes that kind of comments and. I like seeing them too because you guys are saying stuff that I already know, right? Uh, but I'm going to have her come back in and she's going to give me an injection in the back of my right arm. And I thought it'd be like a really cool story. Uh, I know which story already she's going to tell you, but I'm going to ask her like off the cuff, like, uh, can you tell me a story about how we met and, and why, you know, you continued to date me. What was this? What was it that you liked about me? And I'm gonna let her tell that story, and then I'm gonna tell you a better story. It's kind of a more recent thing, uh, but it, it involves my 1967 Barracuda convertible. Hey, baby. Hey, Cage. How's it going? Good. How are you? Not too shabby. Hey, we're here for another Thursday update, and uh, I was telling the guys about how you injected the back of my left arm last week, mm -hmm. and how you're gonna inject the back of my right arm this week. Yeah. I could probably do it myself. No. The thing that I was worried about is it was, was going to hurt, right? Going into the back of my arm because that's yeah. really sensitive back there, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't hurt at all. I didn't even know that you. It might hurt if you're doing this, though. It might. Because <laughs> I it, can feel my muscle right there. And it will definitely hurt less if you're the one that's pushing the button, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, 
I told these guys I was going to ask you a question before we got the shot done. Yeah. And I wanted to know, a lot of people were commenting about how cute you were and, mm -hmm. and how cute we were together. I'm 60, y'all. And the reason that we're so natural together is because we've been together almost all of our lives. It's yeah. Like 30, yeah. 30, 36 I met, years. I met Ben when I was 22. Yeah. So it's been a long time. But I wanted to ask you, what was the moment that you looked at me and you said, I think this guy could work out for me. Mm -hmm. what, what was the moment? He left five guys at a New Year's Eve party, y'all. And he took me in his 1967 Barracuda convertible and we drank coffee at Denny's for three hours. It was awful coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't a, think it was awful. It was the best coffee I ever tasted <laughs> at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but was, that's when I knew. We sat there all New Year's Day morning. It was yeah. the first time that I could ever just be myself with any guy. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. I have a lot of stories <laughs> over the years, but the one that I wanted to say tell is a little bit more recent. Yeah. Right. Something. The reason why I was like, man, I'm so glad that I kept her around. And <laughs> one of those moments. <laughs> That I knew, right? That, yeah. you, that you really loved me. You weren't just saying it that I knew. Yeah. And it was when we were in the Air Force, when we got married, mm -hmm. you brought it up, that 1967 <laughs> Barracuda that I took you back to the dorms in that yeah. first night that we met. Yeah. We kept that car for many years while mm -hmm. we were in the Air Force, but we got to a point where we couldn't afford to keep it up anymore. And we were getting ready to go overseas. We were getting ready to go overseas, couldn't really afford it, and we were dirt poor. Mm -hmm. Right, we didn't have enough money to once again settle into a new place uh, without selling the car. So right. we got rid of it, and that was a sad moment. Mm -hmm. And then years later, like uh, thirty, two thousand fourteen. No, in two thousand and fourteen, you came to me and said, "Hey, uh, I found a '67 mm -hmm. Barracuda on eBay. You should take a look at it." And I did look at it. It looked exactly like my old one. Yeah, except it was mar maroon in color. And instead of white, all white on the interior, it has... Black and white. Black and white, It's yeah. got the tuxedo interior. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it was really close to my old car. Yeah. Where in fact, it was only two or three behind on the assembly line. Mm -hmm. Right? So... I was like, wow, that's a really cool car. And I was looking at all the pictures and everything. And she says, if you want it, you can have it. Yeah. This is all these years later. Back then, we couldn't afford to save any money. And we had saved, not that we could these days, but we had saved some. Mm -hmm. And she was going to allow me to spend that big chunk of change mm -hmm. on, a, on an old 67 Barracuda con convertible. And we did buy it. Mm -hmm. And it's in my shop right now. I'm going to show you what it looks like. But totally restored. We restored it completely. It's All the wires, beautiful. everything have been replaced on that car. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's my story. Yeah. So, and that's one of the reasons that I know, right? Because that was very considerate of you. And I Aww. really thank you for that. And every time I see that car, I remember that act. It was considerate of you to sell your other car so we could afford JT because we had just had JT at the that time. That was the reason. Yeah. We had another baby and yep. man, those diapers are expensive as they, they are now. Be, oh my gosh. I, I don't know. Can't even imagine the price. How right are now. they even doing it now? <laughs> anyway, are you ready to give yes. me my injection or did yes, you I have am. anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, where's your alcohol wipe? They're right here. Okay. Is that all you wanted to say were my alcohol wipes? <laughs> Uh, the last thing I'd like to say on this subject, maybe not the last thing, but for now, is when you find your best friend, the person that you can just be totally yourself with and talk to about anything and everything, that's your person. That's the person you should marry. And I'm not saying that it's always been great I mean, it's great right now, and it has been for the last, like, 10, 15 years, basically. Oh, I thought you were going to say days. <laughs> <laughs> it's been awesome for 10 to 15 days, but before that, it was no, a real shit show. It's, uh, <laughs> no, it was great, you know, um, but... I can't look. 
<laughs> You're funny. I hate needles, man. And I, you know, I know it's not going to hurt because it didn't hurt last week. Watching it hurt like mm -hmm. hell this week. You remember how to do it? Of course. Okay. Be careful. Be gentle. So I'm not going to tense up. You just push it up there firmly. Yep. Got it. Ah! Lies. You're such a fibber. I know. <laughs> I gotta get sympathy no, somehow. But, uh, there was a coworker I had. He said, I want a relationship like you and Ben. And I said, find your best friend. That's who you're gonna be happy with. And she should have said. He got married right after that. It was amazing. She should have said, find some fat guy with a beard. <laughs> and a terrible sense of humor. He doesn't have a terrible sense of humor. It keeps me laughing. That's one of the reasons I've stayed with him all this time. <laughs> all right, Kate, that's it. I love you. You have once again performed amazingly wifely duties on the back of my arm. You're welcome. See ya. <laughs> Bye. I knew she was going to tell you that story about New Year's Eve. We were at a New Year's Eve party, the first time we'd ever laid eyes on each other. Probably an hour later, I was leaving with her. Uh, and I don't even think the ball had dropped yet. And we were sitting in Denny's drinking coffee the rest of the night. Anyway, great story. And uh, J.R. Upton, one, uh, responded back to me in the comments section. Like, I hope that you guys will do. If you have a question or if you want to answer for one of my, for one of my questions on here, I'd really appreciate it. Answer in the comments. I've been taking gabapentin for at least 15 years. Three 400 milligram tablets a day. It's not an issue. For other people it is, and I asked my doctor about, you know, is gabapentin gonna cause me to gain weight? Not that I've noticed it. In fact, I lost weight on it so far. Uh, and she said, no, it's unlikely. She said, uh, it's unlikely, like less than 2% of the people uh, are affected in that way with gabapentin. So uh, I'd have to be pretty special to gain weight on gabapentin. And as it turns out, I'm not that special after all. J.R. Rupton, thanks for letting me know that it hasn't affected you, but also have to say, rookie, 1,200 milligrams a day? They got me on 1,800 milligrams and that stuff ain't working for me. My foot is still dead. So one last thing before I go, one last quick story, kind of a weird thing that I keep going through time and time again. I'm, I'm a shirt lover. You guys will see me in all kinds of shirt. I've got all kinds of t-shirts and I buy them uh, <laughs> a couple of times a month. I'll buy a new t-shirt. I bought this bull shirt recently from Reed's Cattle Company. If you guys don't know who they are, look them up. They're on Instagram. They're a family uh, run farm uh, ranching business. They give away stuff throughout the year and they support their family on the stuff that they raise out there. Anyway, long story short, this is where I bought the shirt from, but I keep making the same mistake over and over again. I keep ordering the extra large. My size when I was about 80 pounds heavier was an extra large, right? Barely, I was almost ready to move up to the 2XL before I started all this weight loss stuff. Uh, but now my size is probably a medium, maybe a large in some shirts, but a medium moreover, more often than not, I'd imagine. This is an extra large, I'm drowning and I can't even wear it out because it comes down almost to the tops of my knees. That's how big it is on me. Uh, but this is one of those things that I'm having a hard time getting over, right? That I am a uh, smaller size, I am a medium or a large, and I need to start ordering appropriately, right? So my clothes fit me better. So you guys can see my six pack. Actually, it's not a six pack yet. It's still a one pack. It's still a uni pack, a single pack. But I'm planning on a lot of hard work this summer, I'm gonna make it into a dual pack. And eventually, in a couple of years, uh, even if I have to draw it on, it's going to be a six-pack. I'll see you next Thursday, y'all.